But I know democracy. some, but what, what other factors? And I don't want to hear, what well, other factors? Our surveillance program counts cases of autism and, and establishes the prevalence. It, it doesn't tell us all the answers to the questions as to why. We've looked at, we've tried to look at what's changed in the environment of things that we know are risk factors for autism, things like preterm birth and birth weight and um, uh, various. Well, well, are you looking at vaccinations? Is that part of your studies? So let me just finish this one. So we've no, I, I, we've, my, I have a question. Are you looking at vaccinations? Is no, that we, part of you? Pardon me? So there is a, 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 a large literature, as I mentioned. Are you before. having a study on vaccinations and, and, and uh, there the happens, fact that they're there cramming happens. them down and having kids have nine at one time? Is that a call? Are, are, do you have any studies on vaccinations? There have been a number of studies done by CDC on vac vaccinations. As Could well you as send as them as to the uh, uh, ranking member and the happy. chairman here? I must have had... 50 different parents write me or come to me and say I had a healthy child, yet then they had 10, 9, 6 vaccinations at one time, and that child changed overnight and was knocking their head on the wall, and it was a changed child. In fact, I had a family in my office today uh, where the mother broke down crying, saying my child was wonderful, bright, precocious, talking. She took those vaccinations, and the child became uh, very incredibly sick and has never recovered. But why do you have to have cram nine, six at one time when the verbal evidence seems so strong from so many people that they had a healthy child until they got vaccinated? And that's why I don't know that we're spending enough time and energy looking at this where our kids are getting twice the shots of everybody else. And I just have, you know, my sons, it seems like they're older now in their late 20s, but they might have had seven or eight. And I'm just going by people that I represent in our area that feel strongly that this has to be looked at in a very, very aggressive way that we're over-vaccinating our children. And I, I'll doctor either one of you. 40, 42,000 lives were saved, 20 million cases of disease were presented, prevented, and... 13.6 billion in direct medical costs were saved. When you put all these drugs or uh, vaccines into children, the impact that these various vaccines might be having, combinations, I that's the number I got. I don't, ha I don't have a specific speed. number. I'd be happy to provide additional information for the record on. Uh, but I think it's 2.3 million, and they say that it cost the country, I didn't realize it was this, to this magnitude, $137 billion a year in annual cost, cost this country for care of autism. Do you agree with that number? Either of you? Again, I would not have the data to agree or disagree. I know that it's a high number. Okay. Well, I just want to let you know we've got to spend more time and resources and fix this problem because it's obviously it's out of control. There's something wrong. I, it's, it's, and, you know, the gentleman, I thought, asked some very good questions. Uh, the, as a matter of fact, the whole panel when you've got this combination of shots and you go from one in 10,000 to one in 88, it seems to me somebody would say, wait a minute, let's put the brakes on this. Just look at, you know, whether the, the multiple shot uh, situation is causing this. And I, I wish you could see the people behind you. They're grown men that have been crying behind you and women crying. And it's just, it's, uh, I'm just, I just hope that we can, you, I mean, it, it, all, I mean, you, you hear the frustration coming from here, and I'm just sitting here, and I'm just saying, wait a minute, it just seems like somebody would say, is there something, maybe there's an issue here, and let's, if we're going to err, let's err on the side of, of keeping children safe, even if we had to, you know, do a pause and get one shot a day? Uh, thank you very much. I thank the gentleman for yielding. If I may take a liberty of the chair for a moment, it is our intention to include in future hearings, and, and the gentleman from Indiana is here, a, a narrow but specific uh, request, and I, I put both of you, even though it may, you may not be the witnesses, of the question of drug interactions where the FDA approves individual drugs and individual vaccines, but by definition does not necessarily thoroughly study interactions of any sort that can happen with one, five, nine, twenty different ones. Uh, that's a different hearing. We've heard a lot about the one in 88 number. 
Um, I come from a state where it's one in 47. I've heard a lot about this from my constituents, and I, uh, I've always been an advocate for responsible funding and research for NIH to try to figure out what's going on with this issue. Can any of you tell me about any new therapy approaches that are emerging for effectiveness in treating autism? There's certainly some therapies in terms of behavioral interventions and other kinds of things um, that are being, that are emerging, that are being developed uh, in terms of uh, something like a medical therapy. I think we're much farther away from those kinds of interventions, though one would hope that eventually we would have those to offer as well. Why did the FDA and HHS take thimerosal out of all the children's vaccines it's just a couple, except just the, the one or two or three? I mean, I'd just like to know why they took the thimerosal out if there was no problem and leave it in just a couple. I think neither of us are vaccine experts, and we'd be happy to look into that and provide additional information. Well, I'd like for to the have record. an answer because I think most people would really like to know. Um, one of the witnesses told me that uh, the fugitive doctor had been involved in a couple studies uh, with CDC, and, and I have information here that he was involved in 21 of the 24 studies. And I would like to submit that to the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, so ordered. Thank you. Again, I'd like to. Do you all solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I have carefully viewed and all answered in the affirmative. Please take your seats. I'm here because of my grandson, Christian, who's now 11 years old. Uh, and my daughter, Katie, is sitting back here. And my wife, Suzanne. And he was a boy that was two years old, and we thought he was very precocious. He seemed to be brighter than average. He, had, he walked early. He had um, enormous vocabulary, and then he lost everything. Um, and I'll tell you, without any secret, that my, my daughter you know, firmly believes that vaccines were the relationship that triggered him into this pit. So we, we lost a little boy that we knew. It wasn't like he was a, a disabled person who got more disabled. He was a boy and we lost him. And I sat in meetings similar to the meeting you're having here where I would ask questions about autism. I went to universities, I went to medical schools, and I got the worst answers imaginable. Actually, I heard some of the same answers here just a few minutes ago in the, in the, in the panel. I, they must be, they, they're, they're on a... Twitter ping or something. Um, uh, the Autism Society is about helping people today and preparing them for tomorrow. And we believe that government services, if funded by government dollars, should have focus on advancing, on advancing an individual's quality of life in measurable and meaningful ways. We need to re-examine how government services can be provided, not on a limited definition of services, but rather based on an individual's needs. The need for adult services is, is, is extensive. Uh, when you talk about a fiscal cliff, the greatest cliff that occurs in our community is that when a person turns 21 and absolutely no services are available for that person when they need. A piece of information just came to my attention. The Senate just passed the TRICARE Amendment, restoring uh, all military personnel, uh, ABA therapy, whether retired or in service. It's taken five years to do that. Five years. Yeah. Before 1930, the rate of autism in the world and in America was effectively zero. Today, nearly 70 years after Connor's paper, reported autism rates are 1 in 88. In New Jersey, 1 in 29 boys uh, in, born in 2000 were diagnosed as autistic. What's going on? Why are so many American children sick? I think we have to face reality. We need to be clear. Autism is a public health crisis of historic proportions worse than poliomyelitis. It's devastating a generation of children and their families. We need to face that reality. Autism is a national emergency. The, the, the old surveys, they looked for everybody and they couldn't find people. They didn't miss 99% of the children with autism. It's not hard to find a child with autism. It's obvious when they're autistic. Uh, the notion that we're just doing better diagnosing, even in the CDC studies, they're using the same methodology. So when you see those numbers rising, that's not because the methods are changing, it's because there are more cases. Many of us believe CDC has actively covered up evidence surrounding autism's environmental causes. NIH, meanwhile, has received the lion's share of funding, uh, money they've wasted on status quo research and gene studies. 
It's absurd to focus on genetic research in this crisis. There's no such thing as a genetic epidemic. We need accountable new leadership on autism at NIH and CDC. We need an advisory committee that believes in combating autism, not newly stocked with the one newly stocked with appointees who actually oppose that mission. We need a Combating Autism Act that truly combats autism. Uh, we need to stop investing in the autism gene hunt and identify what has changed in the environment that it could possibly have injured so many children. The scope and the magnitude of these changes, it's, co it's complicated, yes, but it can't be that complicated. There have to be a very small list of things that could have changed. And that was part two. Again, what I'm playing is a scaled down version of the Oversight Committee's hearing federal hearing, hearing entitled the federal government's reaction to the rise in autism just in case you've just walked into the podcast and you're wondering what's going on this is what's going on for the tweeters out there please keep tweeting hashtag cdc whistleblower please keep tweeting what you're doing right now in this very moment is going to have ramification it's going to echo even 10 years from now if everything goes to plan we need you to tweet your child may need you to tweet your grandchild may need you to tweet your neighbor's child your pastor's child please if you don't want to write your tweet go through the hashtag CDC whistleblower and pick the tweets that you would like to retweet that would be so helpful if you're somewhere and you're waiting turn your phone on go to Twitter you know if you don't have the hashtag CDC whistleblower uh, bookmarked it's a good idea <laughs> go ahead and go to it and look at the tweets presented there and start retweeting it's a simple thing you just tap on the RT it's not that difficult and I know you can do this and I know so many of you out there have been doing this day in and day out please keep doing so you know it's not for nothing it matters your child matters you're not alone we're all in this together you know I've been told that leaders create leaders and I'm a firm believer in that and that from President Lincoln, he would off always cite, it was a philosopher well before him, but everybody thinks it's Abraham Lincoln that came up with this. But this is the statement he would often say. Truth is the best defense. So let's defend ourselves like crazy with the hashtag CDC whistleblower. Now I'm going to play the third clip of the hearings from November 29th. 2012 should you want to hear the entire three-hour hearing please go to the c-span library once you're at the c-span library i need you to type in in their search engine at the c-span library november 29th 2012 a federal reaction to the rise in autism or it may say federal government reaction to rise in autism when you're there go ahead and click on it There'll be a way for you to view the entire hearing. Or you might want to read the comments. They allowed, because there was not enough time for everyone to be heard, they allowed the parents or people afflicted with vaccine injury in particular to be heard. There's pages and pages of written testimony submitted to this federal hearing. You might see someone you know in there. You know, and to the people that are tweeting, let's take a look. Um, now in Autism is tweeting. Pamela Drew is tweeting. Uh, let me just go ahead and go to the CDC whistleblower. When trying to inspire people to tweet and retweet even more, go that extra mile tonight or in the morning. You know, I may just come on here every night. And do this show that I'm doing right now where I'm playing more of the clips. I'm going to make some clips myself for those that are listening that are wanting to make movies and need to make sound clips. 
many of us on Spreaker use Audacity. Audacity, just put Audacity in the search engine, maybe with voiceovers, and it'll pull up.